Hello everyone, in this video I'll tell you how we manufactured I-beams for my single story frame house with a flat roof. I'll tell you how we came to this decision, show all the stages of manufacturing, all dimensions, and near the end of the video, I'll calculate the exact cost of one such beam for me. Let's go! So, everything started when the designer who began drawing my house in SketchUp depicted the roof rafters in this way, like some kind of trusses. Of course, they confused me a bit, but I thought, well, this is a designer, he knows better. However, I gave the project to another designer for review, just in case. And among other comments, here's what he wrote about these rafters. The trusses are completely non-functional. This is not a truss at all. As they work as continuous beams, you can ask your designer for calculations. He won't show them to you. There should be a simple roof system here, without posts, simulating truss posts and beam joints in the middle of the span, with support on load-bearing walls. At minimum, all vertical posts need to be removed and covered with OSB or 4 mm plywood, plus installing trusses opposite vertical posts. The ideal option is a homemade triangular I-beam. That last suggestion from the reviewing designer is what started my thoughts about homemade I-beams. I voiced it to my builder, he supported it, said there was nothing complicated about manufacturing, we could make it all without any problems. That's what we decided on. The beam has the following dimensions. Length 11.42 meters. Height at the edges, 25 centimeters. Height at the ridge, 55 centimeters. The beam consists of beams measuring 50 by 60 to 65 millimeters with a groove on the wide side into which plywood is inserted. Groove depth, 15 millimeters, width, 10 millimeters. Regular plywood, not moisture resistant, 9 millimeters thick. As can be seen from the drawing, both the beams and plywood, for obvious reasons, are not single pieces, but made up of several elements. For the beams, at the top, these are two beams, 5.7 meters long, which are joined at the ridge. At the bottom, these are three beams with lengths of 2.47 meters, 5.85 meters, and 3.07 meters. These dimensions are selected so that the beam joint points fall on the top frame of the house, right here and here. The beams were joined with the same plywood, glued and screwed. By the way, about the glue, we use Brit Wood Glue PVA D4. The plywood part consists of six elements. Their dimensions are adapted to a standard plywood sheet of 2.44 by 1.22 meters. We started the work by cutting boards into beams. We cut those very 200 by 50 boards, from which in the previous video we made the frame and joists. I initially had the idea to make beams measuring 50 by 50. Then from one board you could get four beams. In practice, of course, this didn't work. Well, because nobody cancelled the saw curve of 2 to 3 millimeters. So we started simply cutting the 200 millimeter board into three beams with widths from 60 to 65 millimeters. Next, we had to make a groove 15 millimeters deep and 10 millimeters wide in these beams. For this purpose, I bought a Bosch POF 1200 AE vertical router with 1200 watts of power, as can be understood from the name, which, as it turned out a little later, was insufficient to make the required size grooves in 112 beams. This works out to 638.5 meters to be cut. Quite a bit, right? The volume is considerable. We started thinking how to accomplish this. I came up with the idea of mounting the router on a table, attaching guides to it, receivers, and passing the beams through this way. One beam was passed through twice. The first time, 7 to 8 millimeters. The second time, 15. About halfway through, after cutting about 50 beams, the router couldn't handle the machine life and died. Taking it to repair and figuring it out was time consuming. We needed to work. So I simply drove to the store and bought a new Stanley SRR 1200 router, and it also lasted about 50 beams. 
Buying a third router for six to seven thousand wasn't worth it. There were only about ten beams left. I bought a U Skill 1000 830 AA at 1,100 watts for two thousand, and with it, slowly, just manually, very carefully, we finished it. We made a jig on the piles of the future terrace on which we will assemble the beams. Next, we started cutting plywood into elements. Here's what my sketches look like, where I drew, listed all sizes, and how to arrange elements so that there would be as little waste as possible. Basically, nothing complicated. One person lays out the plywood, another cuts it with a circular saw, and a third moves everything at the right time. It's only long and monotonous. Well, and then the most interesting thing started, assembling all of this into one piece. How this all happened, I suggest just watching. For connecting the plywood to the bottom beam, besides glue, we screwed screws into the side of the beam. They went through the beam, then through the plywood, and back through the beam. For connecting and pulling the top beams to the plywood, we screwed screws from the top. And here's the result. We only had to join the beams with plywood. We did this when all beams were ready. Now it's time to lift the beams onto the frame and secure them there. Before that, just in case, we decided to at least minimally sheath the frame with OSB to give it rigidity. Standing beams can seriously billow in strong wind. I calculated the weight of one beam, it comes out to about 60 kilograms. Number of beams, 28 pieces, distance between them, 60 centimeters. We attach the beams to the frame with screws, screwing them into the lower flanges. To prevent the beams from swaying in the wind, we... Now let's talk about money. How much in the end did all this work cost and the overall all construction costs in this series. Let's calculate. In this series, I bought plywood and OSB3 for a total of 172,608 rubles. I bought OSB3 immediately for sheathing the house, roof, and subfloor from below. I bought 220 sheets at 455 rubles per sheet. I also bought plywood for sheathing the house on the facade side, where panoramic windows are, and, of course, for manufacturing beams. I bought 105 sheets at 700 rubles per sheet. These are 2,020 prices. Yes, looking at current prices now, I understand that I wouldn't have started building any dacha at all. In principle, the prices for OSB and plywood in summer 2021 reached 2,500 and 3,500 rubles, respectively. That is, if I had bought these materials in summer, they would have cost me not 172,000 rubles, but 917,000 rubles. The difference is more than five times. Five times, Carl. It's for damn sawdust compressed in resin. Now, to be fair, I should say that prices for sheet materials 
have dropped, although, of course, they haven't returned to those old levels. But it's winter now, by summer, probably everything will go up again. Well, okay, let's calculate the cost of one beam. So, for manufacturing 28 beams, it took 2 cubic meters of wood. A cubic meter at that time cost 10,000 rubles, so 20,000 rubles went to wood for the beams. 112 square meters of plywood were used. Adding 10% for waste, we get 123 square meters, or 42 sheets. At 700 rubles per sheet, that's 29,400. The routers turned out to be literally consumables for me, and 15,662 rubles were spent on them. Various small things like glue, screws, and other things, another 15,000. Work on these beams, 67,700 rubles. Here I want to note that one of the builders worked on manufacturing for only three to four days, and I, in turn, took the most direct part in all this. My own time spent, I don't count in these calculations. It comes to 147,742 rubles for all beams, or 5,277 rubles for one beam. For time, three weeks. As far as I remember, it took for all this board cutting, routing, plywood cutting, assembly, gluing, Three of us worked on it for three to four days, the rest of the time either two of us or one. I remember this stage as one of the most difficult and tedious, to be honest. In the next video, I'll tell you how we covered the roof with these beams, how many problems we had with this, how one of the builders left me, and I was left with this construction, literally one-on-one. -on -one. So, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, and write in the comments what other beam options could have been made here, in your opinion. Everyone, bye for now. Можно было бы, на ваш взгляд, здесь сделать. Всем пока-пока. No, Нет, not пока. yet. This is the first video after a long break, and after the 24th of February 2022, I can't shoot and edit videos as if nothing happened. I left Russia and don't know if I'll ever have the opportunity to visit my house about the construction of which you just watched a video. For those who are interested exclusively in the construction process, I announce the house is practically ready. Only interior work remains. I have video material shot for several more episodes, and they will gradually come out. What will happen next? I move to Serbia and plan to buy or build a house here. Then it will be about this, as well as about our life, settling in here. If this interests you, subscribe. Those who are already subscribed, stay. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I'll voice my attitude to what's happening. As I already said, I left Russia. I won't go deeper into politics, the channel isn't about this. But I think everything is clear to you anyway. Well, that's it. Bye.